thanks everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon. I'm Jiayun. This is Pin Pin, and we're very happy to have us uh, have her here with us today. Um, it's been quite a diverse range of films that we just saw over the last hour and a half, um, but we return to the top of the set um, to 9th August by Pin Pin. So Pin Pin, um, I'll ask you maybe just a few questions, and then after that we can open up to the floor for further questions from the audience. So first, I understand that 9th August was commissioned by the National Museum of Singapore in 2006 for their Singapore History Gallery. And to make this film, you drew from footage of National Day Parade telecasts over 41 years. And in so doing, you revealed how this style of national public display has remained constant um, over four decades. So could you tell us more about the process of developing this montage and the groups or individuals you chose to focus on after viewing all the recording? Thank you. Um, thank you for programming this in this slate of videos. Um, I've not seen this in a big screen in a theatrical setting before because it was set at the National Museum's History Gallery as the last exhibit as you wound through the galleries. Um, so it's just quite interesting to see it uh, in this format. Uh, when I was commissioned, it, they were renovating the National Museum and they wanted to have a history story of Singapore component for it. Um, it's now changed. I don't know what the new uh, iteration is, but I don't know if you all remember going through that space. You know, as you go down the stairs, there'll be this choir, and then you'll pass through the prehistoric part of it, and then, you know, you pass through the Japanese occupation where all these bicycles were on the wall. Do you all remember it? That iteration of the history. So I, it was quite interesting because I think maybe it was under Cholin National Museum at that time. So she, she might have been instrumental in getting local artists commissioned for each of these different works. And at that time, uh, I was approached to do what they called the finale of that walk around. So it's an experiential space. And they asked me that they wanted to end the exhibition in 1965 with the National Day Parade footage. Okay. Yeah. Um, and when I first heard it, I was really so excited because for me, um, most of the time footage like this is not easily accessible for laypersons. There was no way I would be able to go to, say, media call and say, can I see footage, you know, uh, outside. But because of this project, um, they said, okay, um, we wanted something to relate it to the mass displays of, of National Day. Um, yeah, you know, we, you have carte blanche to just spend time at the National, at the National Archives to, to look at it. So I just jumped right in, yeah. Okay, yeah, that is an incredible opportunity. Um, actually, now that you mentioned, if you think about how we access NDP day to day, it is actually, it's on and then it's off, you know. It's televised and then it's taken off. Of course, now they, they do uh, tel televise over YouTube. You might have a chance to be able to record it maybe. Yes. But by and large, you know, footage, actually a lot of stuff we are not, we, we wouldn't, regular people would not have access to. Okay, interesting. And I think... Um, so that made me want to do the project just so that I could see it. Yes, I think it's really um, quite a feat. You know, I think in uh, the proposal that you shared with us and also um, what you recently posted on your website, um, you actually spent uh, 10 days, was it, um, back to back to view uh, 40, 40 years worth of footage. And could you share with us what that process was like, you know, going through 40 years of the same annual event? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, it was just kind of like, okay, so what... I never thought of the National Day Parade or actually a televised version of National Day Parade as something to, to revisit and think about. But because I had to do this work, I just thought, okay, as part of research, I'm just going to watch it right through beginning to end. Um, all 40 years of it. And then not only that, I I found I had to annotate it 
at each point. Because as you know, if you want to find footage, <laughs> if you don't annotate it with the time code, uh, you may not be able to find it again. So I didn't actually do it myself. I did it with Cheryl and I did it with an assistant. Uh, we just went through and um, the shocking thing is that over 40 years, the footage actually hasn't hasn't changed that much, the sequence of it. And not only that, the, the camera angles that were chosen did not change. Um, so, you know, the, the obvious case would be, you know, the, the PM steps up waves or the, the president's motorcade comes in. And I'll always remember this, you know, the cascade of white coming down the steps of City Hall. And then, <laughs> of course, now they're realizing how... Uh, how awkward that is. So now they've made everyone dress in red and white instead. But for, for almost like five, five and a half decades, it was an expected thing where you see a cascade of white. It was almost felt as if National Day Parade wouldn't be anything without it. So there were all these moments in the parade that I picked out that felt, I think the word you used was immutable, or I, I think it's, it, it's accurate. It's kind of, kind of like without which, unchanging over time. So, so that was one thing I thought, how do you represent the unchangingness? But at the same time, to also represent time passing. Because the physicality of, 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 of you know, people just growing older, the stoop, the hair growing whiter, the different faces, the change of, uh, change of you know, handovers, this and that, yeah. Yeah, but largely, I think in terms of the footage, you know, you also wrote and shared that there there is this kind of remarkable consistency as well. And I suppose then that leads me to the next kind of sub-question. Consistency of the event as well, the consistency of the filming of it. Yes. <laughs> it's almost as if there was not much they, they needed to do. Mm. Um, of course, now with new technology, with drones and all that, they probably have to widen the shooting repertoire. You have a little bit more aerial shots. Yes. Whereas before, you know, uh, you didn't have it. But more or less, the sequence hasn't changed. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think then that presents a very interesting parameter, you know, for yourself as a filmmaker. So you are constantly behind the lens. So, you know, what was it like to work with the pre-existing footage um, shot by someone else? You know, how did you respond to the work of the cameraman or camerawoman before you? Yeah. I mean, I was really excited about it. Yeah. Um, because for me, it's, it's actually the most sustainable way to make work. Okay. <laughs> Recycle images. Okay, okay. Yeah, yes. You don't really have to make new shots, you just, you know, reuse. And it's so ripe to be, to be reinterpreted. Mm. And I don't think enough of that has been done. There's just too much shooting going on and not enough, um, uh, you know, archaeological work. Yeah. So I was able, I, was, I felt really happy to be able to actually examine the footage uh, forensically almost yes, and yes. making a work about the televised event and the consistency of it yeah absolutely I mean I think to think about you know the parade as something that maybe on average is about let's say two to three hours long um, and then to see 40, uh, four, 40 years of that footage compressed down into six Min, uh, seven minutes, you know, so you, you mentioned annotating earlier. Um, so how, how was this annotation process done? I mean, um, maybe collectively as well, together with... Uh, uh, in my archive, I have a stash of notes that said, oh, uh, president steps out, time code, uh, prime minister waves, uh, cascade down city hall steps, this. And then after a while, you find out that the time codes all correspond over 41 years. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in a way, my, my, my worry about not being able to find footage uh, was, was unneeded because it was so uh, patterned. I mean, so in a way, my, my, my late, later work in Time to Come tried to, in a way, unearth similar rituals in Singapore um, where they occur without us even being aware of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it also made me think very hard about, you know, this format is so tied to the current, current regime. 
And if there was a change in regime, would the, would the format still be the same? Or would, would it all become a different kind of celebration? But this is just one, one thing out of many things that are so baked into the idea of Singapore that poking through the National Day Parade allowed me to tease out one, one strand of it. Mm. Yeah. Although a very, uh, as you say, a very immutable and, and symbolic strand. Yes, mm. yes. And I think it's really nice to see some of that resonances with your other work, you know, in time to come. And the fact that, yeah, maybe here we, we also don't necessarily realise how much, you know, ceremony kind of plays into the everyday mm. and that we take it as, you know, part of the course. It's something that has to be mm. done, you know, in order to set something up formally um, or to say something uh, on, on a national kind of scale as well. So, you know, matching shot for shot and presented largely in a chronological order, you know, the film really demonstrates what the parade essentially is, which is a ritual and how our viewing of it is ritualized as well on TV, via TV. And so by having the camera take the position of an observer who is actively framing and reframing the narrative, you return a sense of agency to the viewers who may otherwise be passive recipients of the NDP programming over the years. So could you tell us more about building reflexivity into a film that features a narrative that has become part of our national psyche in some, in, to some extent. Yeah. I felt that the, only, the one way, one of the, if I wanted to make a point of how scarily similar year one to year 41 and maybe now year 61 is, um, the only way I want, I could, well, they're not the only way. One of the ways I could do it was to actually show the repetitiveness of it. Yes. And, and with, with the ability of editing, it wasn't too difficult to actually place it back to back, side by side. Yes. Um, yeah. So the same thing you would see in black and white, and then you see it 40 years later yep. uh, in colour. Yes. I think in... Yeah, I was just kind of looking at it for fun. And I think in the first minute or two, you know, I think there was a set of shots which were about uh, 20 salutes back to back, you know, within a minute or so. And yeah, I think it really serves to heighten this sense of decorum and also kind of a professionalism, you know, or about more like the ceremony. A militaristic uh, way that we, we conduct ourselves in everyday public life. Mm. I think that military quality of it is quite embedded in our everyday rituals that we don't even question it anymore. Mm. And I now, with the hindsight of age, maybe suddenly think that, wow, does it have to be so militaristic? You know, for every morning the assembly, someone says Baris a day and everyone stamps their feet, right? It's like, wow. You know, but then you... you and one of the things I realised was that, uh, wow, that is one of those unchanging things since my school days, since the school days of my father till now. But why does it have to be that way? And what does it mean that it is? Yes, I mean, I think that's really part of the everyday experience of anyone who's gone to school in Singapore. And yeah, perhaps I feel as if, yeah, I would personally, I would say that maybe this idea of ritual and ceremony maybe overtakes the sense of, you know, the, the, the kind of uniformed uh, or uniformity, you know, that is also perhaps in um, other contexts more associated with uh, military. But I would, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that, you know, hearing from other perhaps contexts where private and public life can be very de uh, demarcated, for example, um, in places like uh, Paris, for example, I've, I've heard that, you know, the way that people present themselves outside and inside public and private spaces actually has a very rigorous demarcation. But um, generally, you know, in a place um, like Singapore, that demarcation is not so apparent. So maybe we're very formal in some contexts and very informal in others. Yeah. So. Um, Okay, moving through to perhaps a more 
uh, recent project uh, that you have embarked on and actually also completed and is also on display currently. Um, you know, your latest work, Walk Walk, is a site-specific public installation exhibited at the Kampung Baru bus terminal um, commissioned by the Singapore Art Museum. And it consists of several components, a 27-minute long video, uh, two word sculptures in the bus driver's canteen and the boarding hall. So, you know, it will be on long-term display until 2025. And I think we are mostly familiar with your films. So would you be able to tell us more about this foray into installative work, also as a way to um, suggest, you know, maybe tangents and links between the See Me, See You exhibition, which we also just opened um, in the basement uh, Neon Concourse Gallery a few days ago? Yeah. Um, I... I mean, what, what is interesting for me is maybe it's the, the whole idea of the discipline one chooses for oneself. I've always considered myself a single channel view in cinema, theatrical uh, filmmaker. Okay. Yeah, so the idea of ac actually ha being in a space where people could stream in at will and stream out at will, I don't have the idea of, I don't have the power to tie you down to your seat was um, a sense of loss that it took me some time to, to process to process and also think of ways to work around. Yeah. So one of the ways that I found myself with, with um, 9th of August, so the people are going to be streaming, right, all the way from, you know, showing the, the, the dragon's tooth, then they're going to walk, 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 and then by the time they come to the end of the, they're going to like, maybe look at it for a while and maybe walk off. And at the most, I might have a minute of their time if I'm lucky. Yeah. So how does one schooled in the art of beginning, middle and end process the idea that there are some works that can be accessed at any point in time? So at, at least for 9th of August, I just structured the work in short sections, each with its own theme. And it's played uh, in a loop with no subtitles so that at any point you enter, it, it is just fine. You know, you could enter, you know, the bits with the mass displays or you could enter at the end. Um, but in my mind, if I had my way, it would end with a Malay woman looking at you. And she's taken from the first NDP. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it... it that 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 is how I processed um, time and a lack of control. For in a work work workspace, a similar um, way of thinking needed to be introduced. Uh, for myself, the site of work work, which was a bus terminal in Kampong Baru, and then I'm thinking that okay, how do I convert a bus terminal <laughs> into what do you can what do you call maybe a, a, a temple dedicated to movement or freedom of movement? What does it mean? So there are all these layers of um, these layers that I would have to contend with because you know then the question is why do you need to cite it in a past terminal? You could very well cite it in a black box somewhere. A black box somewhere else. So then I really had to engage with the idea of how the a country's public transportation system... Okay, the film is really about freedom. Oh, the whole work is about freedom, right? How walking is really is a basic uh, unit of freedom. You know, that's why when you, when you see exiles leaving, you know, they would be walking, they would be leaving with their feet because there's no other way for them to leave because that is one way of leaving. Um, so, for me, it made sense to have a conversation about a country's public transportation system and that basic unit of connecting one's feet. Yeah, so anyway, that, that, that kind of conversation had to be had uh, in a way that maybe for this in, in, in a history gallery also needed to be had, but it was in conversation with what the people would be going through mm -hmm. as as they, they move around the space. Yeah. 
And how how did this process of, you know, arriving at um, a kind of semi, would it be accurate to say kind of semi-enclosed or enclosed space um, for the site of Walk Walk uh, arrive? You know, was it first, did it begin first with the bus terminal or, you know, was it... I mean, I'm just, I'm just also curious, also like about. I mean, if it, it, it's it's showing five times a day. It's we converted the transit link office into a little cinema, um, so it's showing the same film at ten, twelve, two, four, six. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you really want to see the inside of a transit link office, <laughs> where you would normally buy tickets, where we have left the little holes on the window panes um, to to show that what that was what. Because the commission was related to us making a work about the rail corridor, and our first choice site okay. was actually the signal cabin along the rail corridor. Did I not see. Come to I pass. see. Okay. Yes. So in a way, this was one of the other sites we were mad scrambling towards the end. Mm. Okay. To to to, to site it. Site okay. It. Yep. Um, but it was a blessing in disguise because SBS Transit found it extreme novelty to be working with artists. Okay. <laughs> so as a result of that, they were extremely... So we were actually going to think, oh, how we had to play this video? And then the bus manager said, ah, you take that, take that office lah. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like thinking, oh, okay, then I can actually make a statement about a ritual of going to the cinema. Mm. You know, in a sense that if you... Are going to the cinema, you at most have two weeks. Yes. Before the, the, the film gets taken out of the cinema. But what what does it do to the, the film going experience if mm-hmm. you are you are you are told not to be too stressed out? Yes, yes. Yeah. You can take your time and go, it will be there. Mm. Yes. Okay. So it's a it's really a different it's a different kind of um, urgency, right? Yeah. And also creating a new public space in in this in the bus terminal as well, because that little room has got aircon, mm-hmm. special lighting, plush seats. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> yes, it's very comfortable. Very yes. comfortable and and it's like really, really disorientating to go there to actually watch a mm-hmm. film. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I mean I think it, it really serves as an interesting note because a lot of the time, you know, people take buses to walk, you know, or walk and then bus. So it's an in- interstitial space uh, for an artwork to be located, you know, at, at once static and at once also in the nexus of, of movement. Um, and unlike uh, 9th of August, which was, I understand, playing on loop. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I suppose that that kind of uh, makes a, a dis. A dis- point of distinction between the two works. But I think in both works, there's also still this element or interest in montage, you know, and the fact that for Walk Walk, for example, you're hearing from multiple voices, you know, you're not hearing from one narrator or one person's experience of, of walking. Um, but would you say that, you know, when you meet 9th of August, the, the, the material itself uh, lend itself well to 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 your interest in montage at the time. I think with footage like 9th of August, all I could think of was, you know, Eisenstein or Man with a Movie Camera, which is all diagonals all the way. Mm, yes, yes. There's a lot of left facing and then right yeah, but facing. But it was shot that way as well, you see. Yes. The, the, the marching columns were coming in this direction and this direction. Okay. So that was also fixed, inherent. Yeah. it was inherent to the footage. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And I mean, that really is also an interesting point because I feel as if, you know, one of the very striking features of the 9th of August is also this idea of organization, you know, of being highly organized. And I know now it's, it's now an hour and a half back or two hours, but... Um, thank you. <laughs> so, um, but, but, you know, this idea of, of bodies kind of aligned and orchestrated in space really is such a striking and almost kind of moving phenomena, you know, that's, that surfaced through the film. So I wanted to open up that question as a broader kind of conceptual gesture. You know, when you think about filmmaking, you know, to what extent is it about organization? 
you know, to what extent um, are you thinking of the viewer's experience of your film? You know, you are ordering and you are organizing um, moving image in a certain way. And of course, montage is precisely also about order, ordering um, these. It also really depends on the work. At least with 9 for August, it was just trying to think of tech, taxonomizing mm -hmm. the NDP. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Through a series of images. Through a series of images, so mm. that you know, suddenly you realise that, oh, it's a thing. Yes. By its organisation. Okay. Mm. So the organising in itself reveals a kind of a, a logic and a consistency as well. Of the event. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can hear. Yes, yes. I was about to open to questions from the floor. Um, would anyone have any questions to ask uh, Pin Pin? Maybe we can hear all the questions first. Yes, of course. If that's possible. Sorry, I can't see you very well from, from this angle. Hi, Pin. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, thanks for your sharing. I was not quite questioned, but maybe some of bit my sharing and my observations almost. <coughs> um, I'm interested to press further on, you know, um, your recounting of that militaristic timing or tempo right, in your work. Um, I wondered if you ever thought about the piece as a kind of horror film, right? Uh, because it's got that kind of um, uh, deliberate march to it. Um, but in a way, I guess, you know, one can also take it to be somewhat um, comedic, you know, or comedy and horror, like how we had Get Out, right? which had a blend of uh, those sentiments. Um, but also that, you know, just recalling the NDP parades, that particular year of 2019, for me was a kind of a, a marked change, you know, of the sentiments, uh, simply by the presence of Ramli Sarip, you know. And finally, I had a, you know, National Day parade that had soul, right? For the very first time, his singing of the national anthem made me cry. So I caught myself out in some ways, you know, there's a surprise element for me. An emotive chord that I never thought an NDP parade could actually have. Right? You don't cry at every NDP? No. Um, actually, I was going to say <laughs> that... I mean, it um, has failed, no? <laughs> I'm a failed citizen, maybe. <laughs> okay. But, the, um, but then it also made me think about how I could be a kind of a disinterested or distant... Um, viewer that you cannot control in the same way that you know you said about you can control the visitor in a in video installation right uh, because I could kind of depart from the TV you know and come back to it and it will still feel the same right because the modus operandi recurs you know each and every year you kind of know what, when to expect the president to come right on uh, and YouTube perhaps allowed us to have a more distance relationship with the um, NDP parade because I could come back to it on YouTube and rewatch this at any time that I choose to. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks. Thank you. Can I hear the other question as well? Or oh, comment? Hi. I was just wondering also, in terms of like National Day parades, when you think of it, I mean, the National Day songs are a very iconic part of it. So I was wondering, when you were rewatching it, rewatching all the footage, like, did you consider including the songs or is it not meant to distract? Or Because I would think that when people think of National Day parades, they think of the songs that unite, especially the iconic ones. So I wonder if you considered that in the making of the film. Thank you. Any more? There's one over there. Hi, thank you for this. Um, I wasn't around Singapore, I think, at the time when this was being shown at the National Museum. But um, my question would be, what was the brief to you at the time? Because clearly that you were probably already quite established at the time as, as an artist. And from what I would recall, from a stat board point of view, would, be, would it be that they were commissioning something just as a highlights reel? Were they looking for something with more depth or sub substance? Like what you shared with us earlier and what the first question 
you know, brought out so aptly um, to some people. It is just so formulaic. And I confess, I haven't seen National Day Parade since the 90s. So, yeah. And so the question was also to understand how you dealt with it, if there was a brief at all, and how you presented it. Thank you. Wow. Um, just to be clear, do you mean that how did the commissioners uh, commission something so familiar? Is that what you're saying? No. Um, so I would assume that um, when they wanted something done this way, um, they of course wanted to showcase the highlights of a nation's parade and whether there were any particular briefs to you, like, oh, you know, what are the things that we must show? Um, what kind of feelings, like you said, we want to elicit, like, pride, you know, want oh. to cry. And, <laughs> and you know, how, how you went around answering so, the so-called brief right. and um, how you presented it, your vision. Right. And if um, there were any rounds of revision, that the initial oh. vision had to be altered Okay. To come towards the final product. Right, right. Yeah. Um, actually, it was quite interesting that you asked ask this question. Um, the subcontractor was an organization called GSM. They designed exhibits. And the people whom I worked with directly, I didn't work with the museum, I worked with... Panukshmi and Mark Frost, who were the designers of that space. So like the exhibition designers. Exhibition designers. Yeah. And I think they must have, in a larger meta picture, sold this walkthrough to the stat board. And then I was, in a way, asked to make the National Day Parade. So they were actually quite relaxed. In fact, they they, they, they talked about a film that was... Um, playing at that time called State of Mind, which was a film, uh, a documentary about the North Parade, North Korean parades. <laughs> and you know, if you think that this is big deal, the North Korean parades are times 100, because instead of having 1,000 people, they would have 100,000 people. The scale of ours is, is kind of like kindergarten by comparison. So I kind of think, okay, if that's kind of what they're thinking about. So kudos to them, they might have a sense of humour as well. Or a sense of a horror film. <laughs> um, I just took that and ran, ran with it. Recently, when I was putting this programme together, I found the, the, a, a paper I wrote that the subcontractors could bring it up to the stat board. <laughs> It's actually on my website, tanpinpin.com. You click 9th of August. I actually had it there. And it was quite interesting because here you you, you feel me in a way skirting um, all the possible mine, mine landmines. Um, I used words like, um, I love the National Day Parade and have been going to National Day Parade. I think that's the opening sentence. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking that every time you put love in a title, you 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 or, or opening sentence, you know, you you might get away with murder in some in some cases, but not in other cases. Um, yeah, so if, if I felt that I needed to uh, I, I will try to explain, you know, why it was structured a certain, a certain way. And I used the idea of time. And I felt that, that was the other thing I wanted to pull, pull through. But what I feel about it now is so different from what I feel about this work uh, 17 years ago. 17 years ago, I was probably uh, still bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Um, but I'm glad to say that now, looking at it now, I do feel the horror... <laughs> <laughs> that Adele has has mentioned, um, because as I mentioned, you know, we practically have the same uh, National Day Parade almost coming to what fifty seven seven years. Yes, yes. Mm. So, oh my gosh, my <laughs> math <laughs> fifty eight years. Yes, someone help. Yeah. So suddenly that that brings it in some quarters. It's its own horror film 
Yeah. I mean, it's a very young <laughs> horror, you know. <laughs> Other countries have been around for way longer. Uh, young horror with some changes. Okay. Where okay. there are no changes in this one. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that that is what I mean by... Uh, looking at it with, with, with the eyes of someone 17 years older and thinking like, oh, wow. Um, yeah, and, and to go back to your point about... There was a question about songs as well from Sarah, was it? Yeah, I didn't really think of using uh, diegetic sound from, from the telecast in the film at all. Um, yeah, it would just be men with a movie camera, percussion music, just pum, 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 all through stirring it around. Um, and of course, the, the, the moments which would in some quarters be considered horror movements would have a Hawaiian air guitar playing under it to, to contrast the distance between what you might see and then what you might feel and hear audially. Mm. Yeah, that definitely was quite a significant feature, I think, of, of your um, film. Because I think for me, when I watched it also, I wanted to ask, you know, how you decided on the, the musical cues, in a sense. Because I feel as if there are still elements or instrumentation that might kind of connote a parade. Uh, but at other times, you know, there's also a, quite a deviation. Yeah, so like the, in the gap fifth between movement. the music and, and the visuals was deliberate. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I think you would hear the kind of parade music maybe in the first movement. But then after that, it would, it would take, uh, have, have fun. Yeah. I see, I see. Okay. I don't know, I mean, I'm curious. To, to, you, this is like 17 years old, this work. Now seeing it again, uh, you, you want to share some thoughts? Because I think it was like, I was thinking, oh, what kind of music should I put under LKY? <laughs> and all I could think of was like, Ding -ding 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 -ding. <laughs> with a lot of, you know. Because it would be too obvious to put his face next to say that, that kind of salute. And, and temporally, it doesn't make sense because they're actually saluting to the president as well. Mm. Okay. Does anyone have any comments on the film? Okay, if not, then I will ask, I will say my bit first. I mean, I know I've been talking a lot, but um, I think it was interesting for me also to look at a few seconds of footage, I think towards the end of the first movement, where you focused on shots that were of the cameras. You know, there were the cameras rolling. And then I think right before the first minute and the second movement starts, you know, there's this huge kind of camera mechanism which, uh, you know, has a big rotating device and the lens, you know, it's protruding from, um, you know, the camera body. Um, and I thought that to me that was a very significant inclusion. I mean, again, because you could choose from many, many, many hours of footage, but these few seconds were very significant because I think it also helps to imply or suggest very explicitly that this footage is also the product of, you know, the lensmanship of, of others, you know, and to, to enter into the film is, is not to suggest that you are entering the filmic, um, but really it, it almost suggests that, you know, you're piercing a, a wall, you know, to say that you're looking at what has been pre-recorded and, and pre predetermined. So would you be able to share more about that inclusion, I suppose? I think I was very influenced by Vertov's Man with a Movie Camera at that time, which is um, maybe 1920s uh, montage uh, camera. And, and it's really, really playful. At some points, uh, very often you, it shows the camera that is shooting the work and then it comes back out. So you are forever being reminded that you are watching a, a work that is filmed in an angle that is specifically chosen by someone. I mean, and that, that, that film's probably worth watching because they even bring you into the edit room. There's a scene where someone's pulling off the, 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 the strip of film. So I was like looking at it, I was like, oh, okay, so that's where 
those cameras made sense. But also temporarily, it made sense because you could see the technology of the cameras <laughs> shrinking in size. Yes, yes. As, you know, as the people grew more white and old, the cameras shrunk in size. You could make that, you know. <laughs> it's an inverse. Inverse uh, connection between, between, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in that big camera, what's interesting about it, it's got three lenses. And I think the zooms weren't that uh, developed at that time. So in order to change a lens, you yes. really just turn the dial and then the, cam the, the longer lens or shorter lens would be used instead. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, as in, <laughs> to me, that was very um, kind of important, you know, to, as, as a viewer to watch. And I suppose my, my last comment, I mean, everyone, f please feel free to jump in. Is really about the closing shot of the film. You know, um, in your proposal, you talk about um, this uh, audience member from the first NDP parade watching, and she's quite pensive. You know, she has her hand on, um, uh, she has her chin on her hand, and her expression is 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 quite neutral. You know, so you know to close out um, the montage like this. You know, what what also was the kind of thinking behind that at the time? Um, I think this is kind of where the the sentimental part of me kicks in, and sometimes I can't stop myself. I always bring it it back down to the person, and the best way for me to represent the individual in this whole, you know, this this really big thing like a, a national day event. Mm -hmm. So it's the people that queue up to come and see it, even in the rain, that kind of thing, and how they feel about it. So the last movement has individuals looking right into camera, and it's looking right into camera across time. Um, so you will always remember, even if I feel really ironical and sarcastic about it now, I want to give space to people who still feel totally earnest about it. And I think that movement is reserved for that part of... The viewership. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I mean, I think that, that also really gives a sense of, you know, why this shot kind of closed the montage as mm -hmm. well. Um, okay, there's one question in the centre. Um, thank you for testing. Does it work? Thank you for your sharing and for the short film. This is not related. I'm actually very curious. Um, how did you know you want to be a filmmaker? Um, because it's not a very like common kind of career, you know, if I, if I contextualize it when you're at a formative age. Uh, second related question would be, would you say you have developed any kind of um, philosophy behind your choice of uh, this discipline, yeah? Um, I think I was very... I loved movies. And I realised not only did I love movies, I wanted to make them. <laughs> Which is, I think, a leap. Because as a friend of mine jokes with me, says, I also love movies, right? but you see me making movies. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to make what I loved as well. So that was... Um, and so the learning curve was very, very long, but because I and I was very interested in it, it felt like I was learning something new every day. Yeah, so I hope that answers the question. I don't know if, if I would still feel the same way. In, I don't know if people, if there are things young people are so passionate about that they want to do it these days. I'm really curious. Where they would actually spend time to actually, you know, um, throw themselves at it, which is what I did. Uh, I just threw myself into it. Okay. Well, the second question of philosophy. Uh, yes. Sorry, we'll take one last question and then... What was my philosophy? 
Oh yeah, I remember there was one. There's a there's a there's a photographer that I liked very much called Gary Winogrand, and his philosophy was if you've seen it before, don't do it. So I just thought, oh, that's a really good, good, uh, you know, starting point. Uh, guiding principle to do it. It's like basically, you know, if if Wonka Wai has already done Wonka Wai, don't do another Wonka Wai. <laughs> Yeah, or if this is being covered by the mass media, then let's do something that's not been um, covered or hasn't been spoken for. So it really, you know, covers a different... Uh, yeah. Okay, um, just as a closing question, I'm, I'm curious if, you know, suppose you're invited to um, direct the National Day Parade like yourself one day, uh, what would you change about it? How would you um, see it, you know, yeah, changing one day? I'm curious because you've been very observant, you know, of the National Day Parade um, rituals. Yeah, so if you yourself had the opportunity to do it, you know, would you do it, follow it the same way or change something? Yeah. That's a question I was afraid would be asked. <laughs> Um, if I were to, if I was the king, queen of the world, and I could decide what the parade would be, um, not not to say make the National Day parade, I would actually keep it really simple as a commemorative event, With, without the bluster, you know, and the, and and all the bells and whistles, which I feel um, lose sight of 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 the event of the formation of Singapore. Mm. So it'll be actually almost just a commemoration of, you know, maybe it could be a flag and and and, and the the pledge set and and the song sung, and and that would be it. It would be a really short, uh, maybe ten minute event. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. And I'll be happy to film it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, with that, thank you so much, Bin Bin, for your sharing today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on a Sunday afternoon. Um, please do see Bin Bin's work at Kampong Baru Bus Terminal and also see our exhibition downstairs in the Nian Kong Si Gallery. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Thank 9th you. 9th of August is actually available on my website, tanpinpin.com. Um, if you just click at the, the box that says 9th of August, it's available f for free. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes.